Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing this morning and it is then posted on our website for you to watch at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our archives. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of our topics. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is a state agency for libraries, uh, similar to your state library. So we provide services to all types of libraries in the state. So you will find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries. Um, public, academic, K-12, um, museums, archives, corrections, anything and everything. Really our only criteria is it something to do with libraries. Um, we have many training sessions, demos of services and products, book reviews, interviews, um, all sorts of things. Uh, we have uh, Nebraska, some sessions, um, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff do our um, shows, talking about things we're offering through the commission, but we also bring in guest speakers as we have this morning. And as you can see here on the line with us is Becky Clark and Scott Clark, both from Lincoln City Libraries in two different at two different locations. <laughs> Good morning, Becky and Scott. Good morning. Hi. And they're going to talk to us about book talking, uh, something libraries have been doing for a long time. And um, we are all in the still in the deep throes of the um, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, no sign of slowing down. So um, they have a great presentation here to tell, tell us how to do some book talking um, in our current situation. <laughs> so I'll just hand it over to you all to take it away. All right. Good morning. <clears throat> and hello from Lincoln City Libraries in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Becky Worm Clark. And I'm Scott Clark. And I'm currently the service supervisor at the Best Dodson Walt branch in our system. I'm actually the only original member of the staff still at this location, and we are coming up really soon on our 20th anniversary next month. I can hardly believe that. Wow, awesome. And, <laughs> and I'm a library service associate at Ben and Martin Public Library downtown, the LCL headquarters. I specialize in research questions. Um, I'm a former member of our reference department back when we had a reference department. And I also manage some of the library's web content, um, especially that for reader's advisory information, resources, and programming, which we sort of gathered all together into a specialized uh, website, which we call Book Guide in 2004. Uh, we both began our library careers as library aides at different branches, and that was so long ago that between us, we now have 85 years of combined library service. Wow. <laughs> um, and for several years, we did both work at the main library, but in different positions and different departments at times, um, and that's been at Martin Library. And then for these past 20 years, we've been at our different locations again, but we've both done a significant amount of reference and reader's advisory work over our careers here. Um, and, and Scott. <laughs> and for those who aren't aware, we've been married for 31 years, so we're one of those library couples. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, this presentation that we're doing today was originally given as a pre-recorded video and PowerPoint at the 2021 Nebraska Library Association Annual Conference. And then um, when I originally made the proposal last spring for the book talking um, uh, program we're doing, we were under the assumption that the pandemic would kind of be under control by the fall. So obviously we are not really in the after phase fully of what we're talking about today, but we can at this point carry out book talking that is adaptive to ongoing changing situations. Mm -hmm. So we'll go to before, if I can get my screen to go here. So um, if you work in customer service in a library, you've most probably engaged in book talking, even if you don't know it. Book talking is having an exchange with library users, and that includes coworkers and volunteers. 
about an author, a genre, a theme, a subject, a series, or anything else that interests or appeals to one or both of you about books you have read or that you want to read. And it's that live connection between printed or digitized matter and the people who inhabit the library world specifically and the literate universe in general. And this, of course, would apply to the book selling trade as well. Uh, book talking promotes a library's collections. It personalizes a customer's experience. It provides information, suggestions, and recommendations for individual or group journeys into the realms of imagination and fact. Book talking makes use of the library's facilities for in house programs or discussion groups. And it is also a way to perform outreach to specific groups or agencies and then the public at large. Uh, the content of book groups is determined situationally or by plan. It can be prepared solely by staff or in collaboration with the particular group being served, such as, for instance, a teen advisory board. Staff can open up book talk content to the participants, either in advance or in the program. Lists of what is covered, which could include additional reading suggestions, can be prepared both beforehand or provided afterward on paper, online, or both. Before COVID-19, there were very minimal concerns um, with one-on-one -on -one book talking or gathering in groups uh, for book clubs or live programs about books. Radio, television, audio and video recordings, and the internet had already been employed as alternate means for getting together in person to talk about books. Uh, and printed and online book lists of many types had been made available to patrons for a very long time. Also, though it is primarily geared toward children, Story time programming is really another way of book talking, especially when adults and families are also participating. It exposes them to books that are owned by the library and are being highlighted by library staff. And at Lincoln City Libraries, we use the moniker library learning time nowadays, since we do more at a session than just read books aloud. Specific to book talking at Lincoln City Libraries in more recent times, staff appeared on local radio programs on community station KZUM and commercial station KFOR. Lincoln City Libraries director Pat Leach has a regular spot on NET Public Radio's All About Books. Special readings and literary programs presented by the Heritage Room of Nebraska Authors, based here at the Ben Martin Public Library downtown, were videotaped so as to be able to circulate. Many of these programs have now been digitized and put up on Lincoln City Library's YouTube account. From its inception in 2002, the One Book, One Lincoln program has enjoined community-wide participation and developed tie-in programming led by both staff and special guests. The book got the book guide section of the library's website offers dozens of staff generated book lists, several thousand staff recommendations, and also customer reviews and reader lists. Staff, rec uh, staff members get together and record short podcasts to be made available through the Lincoln City Library's website, and they recorded some of the ongoing public book group sessions for the same purpose. All of these resources were geared towards the adult and young adult library users. And speaking of book discussion groups, several library-sponsored programs provided regular opportunities to hear about and discuss books and media materials. Examples would be the weekly groups at the Gear and Bethany branches and the monthly Just Desserts mystery book group in the evenings and lunch at the library talks over the lunch hour. All right, so you're seeing some of those images from those book talks here. and Heritage Room Talks, um, we've also had ongoing for a very long time. And uh, there is the late Lita Powell Drake, who gave a presentation when her book, The Calamities of Calamity Kate came out. And monthly lunch at the library sessions. And Scott, do you wanna talk a little bit about uh, having been on the radio for the book sure. program? Sure. Um, KFOR, uh, local commercial radio, uh, basically uh, had a host of a show called Problems and Solutions. Uh, Kathy Blythe hosted that show for many, many years, and she was an uh, avid reader. She loved sharing literature, and she wanted to have librarians on on a regular basis. And so she basically dedicated, at one point, it was almost weekly, um, and then it sort of uh, 
became a monthly thing where she would have anywhere from two to four um, library staff uh, on as guests on a particular episode and all they would do would be book talk. They would spend an hour with commercial interruptions, of course, uh, talking about books that had recently come out or possibly old classics. Uh, Becky and I both had the, the pleasure of being part of the last team of, of regular reviewers that um, Kathy had on before she retired. Uh, but that um, from 2002 to approximately 2019, uh, that we, we had hundreds of episodes where we were able to uh, share the love of reading and share what was going on in the Lincoln City Libraries. Her show was actually syndicated throughout the Midwest, and so it was kind of interesting. We, we could promote our local stuff, um, but we also had to sort of tailor some of our commentary towards the fact that it was going to be people in Minnesota and Wisconsin that were actually listening to the show. Uh, the other show that we uh, were able to participate in to a certain extent, and so were several other NLC, uh, Nebraska Library Commission people, was on KZUM. Uh, there was a book talk uh, show on that, uh, which lasted for several years, hosted uh, by a few um, people from NLC, and they would bring on um, other guests, including several of us from the Lincoln City Libraries, where for a half an hour, uh, we would basically talk about one particular book. Oftentimes, they would um, even have authors come on and, and be interviewed. So uh, there were a couple of really good opportunities for doing that. Right now, although there's not a book talk show on KZUM, the community radio station, uh, there is uh, there are several of their music shows, uh, which occasionally have library staff. Um, so the Scott Scholes, the music librarian here at the Bennett Martin um, Library in um, the Lincoln system, system uh, has a weekly radio show on KZUM, um, which he taps into a lot of the content that's available in the Poly Music Library for the Lincoln City Libraries. Uh, and Becky and I occasionally will pop up as guest programmers on the women's show, uh, which basically allows us to make use of many of the music resources that um, are available in the library collection as well. And there we are at KFOR and there is Mr. Scholes. And then Pat. our, yeah, go ahead, Scott. Um, Pat Leach took over as the host of All About Books, uh, which had been on the air for many years. Charles Stevens um, had been the former host of that, um, or actually one of several hosts. Um, and uh, as, as his uh, time was nearing the end um, for being the host, they brought on Pat as an occasional co-host or guest host, and she has now inherited the mantle of being the host of that. And every week, um, in the past, it used to be Wednesdays, I believe now it's Thursdays, uh, she has a very short little bit um, usually around noon, if I'm remembering correctly, um, in which she shares about a 10 to 15 minute talk about a book or possibly interviews an author, oftentimes focusing on Nebraska authors, but not entirely, uh, and, and also promoting literary events that are going on throughout the community and throughout the state because it is a statewide um, program. So it's not just emphasizing Lincoln City Libraries, but literature throughout the state of Nebraska. All right, and then a couple of examples of our external presentations that we had been doing. Uh, obviously, One Book, One Lincoln, and Scott, how many years is that now? It started in 2002, so technically this is the 21st year as we're, as we're taking nominations, even as we speak, uh, for the 2022 selections. Wow, that's awesome. That's going strong still. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then um, on occasion, we will go out to a, a church group or a private book club or things like that to um, present to them um, directly a book talk. Oftentimes those are One Book, One Lincoln related, uh, but any book group can always ask the library staff if somebody would be willing to come and lead a book discussion on any book. Um, I have been called into several um, private um, book groups throughout the city of Lincoln uh, to lead discussions on things that had nothing whatsoever to do with One Book, One Lincoln. Uh, and so that is always a great opportunity to do some book talking and launch a discussion with a new group of people. So. Okay, um, and this is something that um, we had been doing at Walt Branch for a while and got inspiration from, I think, some other library system that we, and this is actually a, one of our volunteer tasks. We have a number of adult volunteers at our branch who will do specific tasks for us on a weekly basis. And we have one lady who comes in for like three or four hours and just picks subject uh, categories in picture books 
and then puts together bundles of about four to five books each. And then we just put those out on a big display rack. And so a parent or even the child themselves can come in and just select a topic that appeals to them and just take those prepackaged books, check them out and go. So, um, and we also have done easy readers kind of in the same concept, but trying to group those by their reading level at that point. And so other branches are now doing that as well. So there's an example of how we do them at this branch. We just have a little tag of what the topic is and we just rubber band them together. And there's some of our first reader bundles. And then um, story time, as I kind of mentioned, to me anyway, seems like it's a great opportunity for book talking with people of all ages. So um, at multiple libraries in the system, we have multiple sessions per week. And this is, we're still in the before phase what, what we're talking about. Um, each branch can determine, and this is under the umbrella of our system youth services coordinator, how many sessions they hold and when, what day of the week. For example, um, we were providing four regular 1030 sessions per week. We were holding an evening session once per month for a few years. Um, and we had also been doing like double sessions some days um, if the demand was high. And then we usually take off the months of August and December to kind of just chill out because <laughs> the storytellers really have their work cut out for them. One nice thing about having a large system like Lincoln City Libraries, however, is that you can collaborate with uh, the storytellers in other locations. So somebody can create a story time kit at one location and share it with the other locations. So not everybody is having to create entirely just for themselves. Exactly. And then um, our online content, as Scott mentioned, we did have book guide uh, started in 2004. We also have subscription services such as Novelist and Tumble Books that we make use of for the public. Um, readers advisory and reference resources, and Scott can talk to that a little bit more in detail. Sure, we, we make use of a number of different things. Uh, there's uh, a site called Fantastic Fiction, which I think librarians around the, the world make heavy use of um, with regards to being able to identify series order of things, uh, what the cumulative total of an author's output has been, at least in the fiction category. Um, we have a lot of people that come in asking questions about both Goodreads and Library Thing, which are library cataloging sites that anybody can um, get a free account with, so you can catalog your own personal collection and what you may have checked out from the library and read. Uh, they're also um, oriented towards uh, sharing through social media. So we, we assist people in setting up those types of accounts and showing them how to use both of those kinds of services. And there's a lot of other reader's advisory sites out there as well, but those are three really good ones that we usually sort of orient around. And then you can talk about podcasts. Sure. Um, we started doing two different types of podcasts in, in our sort of canned script portion of this. I, I referenced it before, but here's the, the nutshell version. Uh, the podcasts are one of two different things. They're either a recording of a particular program or group discussion that took place so that we can share it as an audio recording later, or uh, after we started having the experiences of being on the KFOR radio program, where we were actually able to book talk for a lengthy period of time, we, we sort of decided, why don't we just do that here at the library directly? So we started a show called Casting About podcasting about, um, in which basically two to four uh, librarians would get together, talk about books that they read recently, um, and also um, pump um, upcoming library programs. And we would record these little 15, 20 minute things and put them up as a regular series of, of essentially book review show. Um, so we, there's a, a very lengthy list of podcasts available in, in audio that are still available on the library's website. Uh, at the moment, we're sort of retooling exactly what the future of podcasting is going to be in the library. It's still going to be a component of our reader's advisory, uh, but it's a changing landscape right now. All right, and there's a view of our web page and then the book guide portion of it. 
If you have not visited the Lincoln City Library's website, we do encourage you to do so. Uh, there's so many resources available um, through our book guide site that um, the only way you can really become familiar with it is to stop, visit, and, and so scroll through the options that are there. If you go to lincolnlibraries.org, you, um, you can either do the slash book guide or in the blue banner that's across the middle of our main site, uh, you'll see a drop down menu called Uniquely Ours and you'll find book guide as one of the unique selections under that. So. And, and while we're talking about the link there on the slides and everything, I'll mention too um, that um, along with the recording after the show is done and we have the recording, we will also have the slides available for everyone to see. Um, Becky will send those to me and I'll post them so you'll you'll be able to go through these if you do want to uh, go look at the slides again. Excellent. Okay. One one of the biggest components on Book Guide is our staff recommendations. L literally, since we started the Book Guide in 2004, and I started staff recommendations shortly after that, uh, every month we have a monthly page of new reviews, uh, and they can be very short. They could be a couple sentences, or they can be several paragraphs in length. I do not uh, ask people to limit themselves. So some of our staff are very verbose in their reviews, and others just want to say, "Hey, this is a great book. Check it out." Um, and we have a simple form um, if you're looking for for uh, how to do reader's advisory from behind the scenes for your staff and you would like to do something like this, um, we strongly suggest just setting up a real quick form that can harvest that information uh, so there's a simple way for your staff to uh, submit a book review. So we have this type of form on our website and we are closing in on 4,000 reviews that have been submitted in the years since 2004. All right, and there's some of the um, logo pages for those other websites. <clears throat> All right, now we're at the during portion. So once the provision of public service was impacted by pandemic precautions and then restrictions and then a two to three month closing of our physical buildings, Individual libraries or library systems like ours who remained open in some capacity needed to think about how to compensate for the temporary loss of all of our live in-person book talking. Very quickly, our library system moved to online story times via Facebook. A few virtual programs for teens and adults were also provided as time went on in 2020. Even before the library was once again able to do more than fill hold requests at the door, of which there were thousands of requests picked up while the buildings themselves were closed. We would just pull holds, put them in bags, notify people, um, that would be an automated notification. Um, we would actually pre-check them out because people couldn't come in and do that themselves and hand them off at our door, wearing masks, staying away from each other. So that was quite the affair. Um, our, our lobby was just jam-packed full of book bundles ready to go out. Uh, <laughs> so um, we did the online stuff. Um, we put together book bundles um, ourselves to make available to customers upon request. So that's kind of a variation of what we talked about with the picture book and first reader bundles. So. Um, up to 15 young people's books were picked out for parents wanting a particular topic or character or author for their children's leisure or school reading. And for adults, we would get um, up to 10 or 12 books for them by this same curated service during the closures and for a time after. And um, still, if we have a customer who's really uncomfortable with coming in the building and knows what they want, we will go ahead and pull those items, check them out to them, include that checkout receipt, and then hand them off at the door to the person. And since we are still in uh, COVID at this point, and, and once again here in January 2022, we're once again in a city mask mandate situation, we do occasionally have situations where customers are uncomfortable in coming into the library or for one reason or another may not want to wear a mask. And as Becky said, we will we will do drive up service uh, at each of our locations. If you call us and tell us you want to have somebody bring something out to you at the curb, we will deliver things to you at the curb. So that is another thing that is still going on in the during phase of, of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. 
uh, for at least two of the regular book groups led by library staff. In this case, Just Desserts, the mystery book group, book group I lead, and the Nebraska Heritage uh, Book Group, which is a, a Nebraska author-based discussion group. Uh, Zoom meetings were initiated within short order. Podcasts obviously continue to be produced as staffing allowed. Considering that a notable, notable number of our staff elected to either work from home or use emergency leave provisions for several months before the library is reopened to the public. Existing online content through things like Book Guide was added to such as our monthly staff recommendations list. So honestly, even though the libraries were closed for two and a half, three months, we were still here doing a lot of work and trying to keep people connected with literature. So, I'm just going to move through a couple of these slides, catch us up here. And I think that's something to be aware of for all libraries. Uh, you know, libraries were closed um, physically, but there was so much going on behind the scenes still. Exactly. Keep all sorts of services still available. Well, and it, and it varied from area to area throughout the country. I have library friends in other communities where they just shut down. They didn't do anything. And mm -hmm. I just, that just blows my mind because we, we were almost busier than we normally would be under the circumstances. It seemed like it at times, that's for sure. But right. Because, you know, families and, your, and your, your people who use your library, if their work or schools were shut down, they were home and even more needing Right. <laughs> well, we had so many customers who in the days afterwards, and even during when, when we were doing that, said we were their lifeline. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that that they they would have gone insane um, with uh, not being able to do the things that they love to do if we hadn't been able to be there to provide the types of materials that we love to provide. Mm -hmm. And to still have that connection, that personal connection with other people. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And we were able to take some phone calls. Um, it's not like we got a lot, um, but we were able to do, you know, some limited phone assistance as well. All right, because um, let me let me see where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah, talking about the book bundles. So we've covered that. Um, and we did um, give them a specific name for the ones that where the uh, request came in to us for like a specific type of book or a theme or whatever. And so we called those Bound to Please bundles. And then we've also um, done one for teen level materials and we're calling those teen treasure troves. And the nice thing is, um, since that's still an ongoing thing, it's not an after thing, uh, that we have a form on the library's website. Yet again, uh, anybody can visit the Lincoln City Library's website and submit a request saying, hey, here's what I'm interested in reading. Uh, and basically, they'll take your recommendations and uh, compile some sort of a custom little book um, collection for you. So. All right. So going back to story times, we. Um, like Scott mentioned before, our uh, storytelling staff at Lincoln City Libraries kind of collaborate and share things with each other. So there are already some pre-made kits um, from branch to branch that either the branch at that staff only will use among themselves or they will share it with other branches. And so we kind of expanded on that to make kits available for the public. So that basically there's just gonna be a certain theme and so it'll be like a handout sheet or they can email them something um, that would just give you suggestions of which books to use and some activities like um, action songs or rhymes or regular songs that would go along with that and possibly even a craft that uh, could be done at their home. So we kind of, like I say, we expanded on internal stuff to make it available to customers in that format. And then um, I do a monthly uh, outreach story time at a daycare in Lincoln. Um, it's hospital employee daycare. And I had started doing that in late 2018. Uh, and then when the pandemic hit, we just, you know, obviously could not be doing that at that point. But what I was able to then start doing was to make up again, a kit. So basically I had, I included about four or five books a couple of sheets with action rhymes or songs on it. And then I would just drop that off at the daycare. 
and they could actually keep that for the entire month and use it as they wanted to use it and then I would just exchange. So that went on for several months in 2021. Fall fall from 2020. Um, actually, and then in March 2021, with the approval of the daycare and um, from the guidelines that we were using for the library programs, I uh, contacted the daycare and asked if they wanted me to come back in person, and they actually did. So it was basically an entire year that I had not been there in person, but had been trying to still provide them with these story time resources. So that was really a neat thing to go back and see the kids in person. Um, but now this month, and I'm presuming next month, I will not be able to go in person again because of our numbers of COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> All right. Now we're going into after, sort of, but ongoing, obviously. Um, so let's see. I think Scott's up with this okay. intro. Yep. Uh, beginning in the fall of 2021, our library run book groups had resumed meeting in person on a regular basis. However, as a result of COVID-19 surging in January 2022, most of them have returned to the Zoom online format. Staff are trying out various methods of trying to capture the content on recording so that they are available after the fact, although some things will just only be live in those Zoom sessions itself. All right, I'm going to back up a second here. Um, so um, during our 2021 summer reading challenge, we had conducted our story times outdoors so that staff and attendees could observe that distancing factor. Um, and then we continued that in September and October of 2021. Um, and for this summer's activities, we are likely to add some outdoor story times again um, all of our summer reading activities are kind of in the planning stage, getting things kind of nailed down as far as we can. Um, so that, you know, that all can change uh, kind of at a moment's notice. We hope we can get stabilized here sometime soon. Um, now, holding a program outdoors does require some technical and practical enhancements. So you're going to need sound amplification, um, try to have a really large picture book or even just enlarged book pages that you can show them. Hmm. Um, and obviously things like your, your action songs and rhymes, um, stretching whatever ties in with your theme, you can always do those. Um, we had planned to restart our on-site library learning times, and that's what we call them here at Lincoln City Libraries, um, this month. But like a day ahead of when the first sessions were going to start, we had to cancel those because of the COVID surge. Um, so that did include all in-person programming at the libraries and also those outreach, any of those outreach events that were already on tap. Um, and so we are actually now looking toward about uh, February 12th before we would resume any of those types of programs and we're just going to have to see um, what happens between now and then and let uh, let everybody know obviously what's what's happening or what's actually not ha happening um, now since late june of 2020 our buildings have been open to the public but we've had various levels of masking and visitor capacity um, off and on since then but that does mean that we've been able to have those book talking interactions with our in-house customers for all but three months out of the last 23. So, you know, that's basically, that's the span for our area of the pandemic at this point. Um, we are still accepting those book bundle requests for patrons who are more comfortable with that option. And of course our online content has been available the whole time, nonstop, continuing on. We're hoping that we can get back to a normality of individual group and public book talking and story times within a short period of time. Uh, in the meantime, any new programming that we are considering for Lincoln City Libraries, we, we have been told basically has to be flexible. We have to devise programming that can be changed to a virtual um, format on the fly and back 
So, because we don't know if you plan something for a month from now, whether a month from now you're actually going to be able to do live programming in person. Uh, so everything that we're looking at um, in terms of uh, uh, story times, special presentations and things, all of that has to be modifiable um, very quickly into a digital format. So, so there's some examples of when um, Scott had some live just dessert sessions, but now he's having to go back to the Zoom. And, and it's an interesting experience to see what will happen with a book group. Just Desserts as a group averaged about 20 people um, once a month getting together to talk about a particular mystery novel each month. And when we shifted to a digital format, the, the attendance on that, uh, we still had a lot of loyal attendees, but the attendance did drop down to 12 or 13, and it slowly was climbing back up. When we actually returned, we, we, we had Just Desserts uh, virtually from May of 2021 to the end of, of 2021. When we came back in January, or actually, that's not entirely true, the last few sessions, like uh, September, October, were in person again. Um, we actually had people who had joined us exclusively when we were digital only and were disappointed when we went back to a, a live in person. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's a really weird and interesting juggling act that you have to come up with. Um, I would love to hear if any other libraries were successful in putting together uh, book groups that can be simultaneously digital and live. Our technical mm. limitations were such that since we had been doing Just Desserts via Zoom, when we went back to live, unless we had a computer at one end of the room with a video pickup uh, so people could watch what was going on on Zoom, uh, it wasn't going to work because we spread everybody out over a large room so that we had as much distancing as possible in person. And there was no way a, a camera um, set up at one end of the room was going to be able to pick up the audio of what people were saying at the other end of the room. So if there were other libraries that had success in doing a a a live in person and digital simultaneously i would love to see a session about that so. yeah yeah definitely um that's that's an interesting uh, that you mentioned that because i was wondering about that too uh we've heard of um lots of libraries over the last couple of years talking about how changing from in-person um, sessions to virtual for both book groups, um, book discussions, um, story times has um, increased their participation too. And that yeah. um, people who could not make it physically to the library historically were now being able to participate. Um, people who are homebound or um, people with children who uh, don't do well in a very busy group setting, you know, with, um, you know, sensory issues or whatever, that they did better doing it virtually. Um, and just for the convenience of being, oh, I have to drive to the library and get there and park and then go in for the half hour thing and then get home. Or I can just sit down and pop on my computer and yeah. I'm there. Um, so that, you know, you got a lot more people involved in things, um, which is I, great, I, getting more people wanting, you know, using your services. But yeah, that, you know, what do you do when it's when you want to do both, you've got the people that want to do the in person, and then you want you still are going to have the people that say, like you said, I'm so oh no, you're not doing the virtual anymore. And we, we've done combo things here through the commission various times, um, but and I feel bad that at this point I'd never thought about that. The social distancing for the people in person is a whole different thing than what we've done before. We would have people grouped at tables, and you could definitely get them all in a view of a camera. But when you need your in person people to be separated. Well, especially when you're dealing with a group that it is intentionally a group discussion. It's not just simply a presentation where one person is talking at other people. Mm -hmm. uh, in the case of something like Just Desserts or the Nebraska Heritage Book Group, it's basically everybody has read the same book and is there to throw out their opinions. So you've got people scattered over a large amount of space that are wanting to talk to each other. And yeah. in, in an addition, although social media, not social media, uh, so virtual programming um, like a Zoom kind of thing does allow you to see the faces and recognize and get that voice connection. It's not the same. It's not the same as being in the same room and being able to feel like you're part of a group necessarily. So um, we, the one uh, solution we did attempt, um, and this is something that other, other groups can certainly try uh, with Just Desserts, is we audio recorded the meetings uh, once we returned back to a live in-person session, and those are being put up as podcasts. So somebody who missed 
the meeting. It's not quite the same as sitting in and listening to it live, but you can at least listen to what the discussion was if you were not able to physically mm -hmm. attend the meetings. Mm -hmm. yeah, if, if anybody on the line has any thoughts, anyone, any of our attendees or ideas, um, please do share in the question section. Um, if you've done this at your library successfully or unsuccessfully and you have any, you know, things we can learn from. Um, I know there are software or hardware products that can be used to do better uh, virtual things. There's the OWL is a type of um, web uh, online meeting types program, um, camera and audio that's made for more kind of a group type thing that's doing both um, in person and virtual. Um, OWL video conferencing software. It's a special kind of webcam and microphone. Um, so I wonder if that maybe some libraries or organizations will need to invest in different kind of um, equipment now that might be out there, or this kind of equipment needs to be invented. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we you, have you, some tech information. Not by us. Not by us but <laughs> I, I was going to say, you never thought going into the library work, um, especially dealing with books and literature and stuff like that, that you'd end up having to we deal with the cutting edge technology. I mean, mm -hmm. we uh, are Becky, the early. Be Becky has a slide up that deals with a couple of other things. Uh, just a, other examples of what's going on in a during and s sort of segueing into the after session. Uh, our One Book, One Lincoln, for instance, continues to be a vibrant thing. And obviously we're starting our 21st year. Last year, 2021, uh, all of One Book, One Lincoln's programmings was digital. I mean, there was nothing that was an in-person thing other than possibly book discussion um, groups. Um, and we actually had the author participate in a digital um, interview session. So he, he, he basically gave a talk and people were able to pepper him with questions about uh, last year's selected um, winning title. Um, so that's only like the third or fourth time in the history of One Book, One Lincoln that we actually had participation from the author themselves, um, but it was all digital and, and the people that attended enjoyed it and it was recorded and is available for viewing on our YouTube feed as well. Nice. And then you'll notice um, in an attempt for people in a senior center, you know, and there's going to be a lot of those, I'm sure, um, mm -hmm. they're, they're wanting to still have that access. And um, so we had somebody go to show them how to do ebooks from our um, subscription services. So mm -hmm. that was, you know, like kind of, wow, we, we can still have that connection and get those materials. And then I'll jump ahead here. That was last September. And I, I like to um, give the kids a chuckle. So I dress up and I do voices and I do all those silly things that are part of a good story time. <laughs> tales and tales, yep. <laughs> so um, book lists, reviews, recommendations, any of those variations of book talking don't appear out of thin air. People create them, people consume them, and people are connected by them, even if they don't realize it at the time. So there's informal book talking that you can engage in at any point. You're not necessarily at the library. Somebody's in the grocery store and say, hey, it's that library lady. So, so that's a way to make those connections, and you can even engage them in book talking or talk about things that are coming up, um, programs that are coming up. Um, we're doing a winter reading challenge this month, and that's for anybody to participate mm -hmm. in. So there's an example of something to promote or just mention. So we call that an elevator book talk, because, you know, think of how you can promote um, a program or talk about a book in just a couple of minutes with somebody. And Scott, if you want to chime in, if you sure the the re the reason that it's used in that ter ter um, terminology is you climb onto an elevator on the ground floor of a building and you're going up uh, to an upper floor and somebody recognizes you as a librarian or sees a book in your hand and asks you about it. It, we encourage all of our staff, if at all possible, to be prepared to give a 30 to 40 second synopsis of why they're enjoying something, uh, what else somebody might enjoy if they liked this particular one. It's like, ooh, that's the latest Stephen King, isn't it? I just finished that. That was great. Yeah, if you like that, hey, here's two or three other titles that you could um, possibly look at. And by the way, I work for the library. I could help you with that. So. Here's the library LNK app. You can install that on your phone and, and place a reserve immediately. So, 
Exactly. All right, we're gonna end with something that Scott has been involved with over time. A few years ago, we tried something, speaking of the book bundle concept um, that is currently being used by the libraries, uh, several years ago before that ever was even considered, uh, we tried something that um, I had actually found uh, being done successfully by several other library systems, including things like Minneapolis, and I think it was Los Angeles, uh, which we called Pearls, personalized adult reading lists, in which we had a form that people could go to on our website and identify what their reading interest categories were, things that were hot buttons that they wanted to stay away from, like uh, language, sex, violence, that kind of stuff, uh, and give us an example of the last two or three things that they really enjoyed reading and ask us to compile a recommendation list for them. Uh, and Basically, it was a very, very popular service. Uh, we had people, um, we would basically come up with a list of anywhere from eight to 10 authors or titles that they might want to consider pursuing. We would not necessarily pull those materials for them and have them available for checkout. We just wanted to give them something to consider um, as their next reading um, possibility, and they could then go in and place holds or stop in the library and browse if they wanted to. It was very successful at the time, and as we've continued to expand our book bundles concept, we're looking at doing that once again. Again, at the time, it was personalized adult reading lists, and our, our staff who make the decisions have decided that it's now going to be personalized reading lists for anybody at any age. So we're sort of retooling the software that we originally set up um, to do that, but that should um, most likely be starting soon as well. So. And that, for us, for our main purposes, that's basically a hands-free, you know, no contact, <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, up to the point at which they may come in to check something out. So that really would speak to the whole, you know, pandemic, I, I don't want to be around people sort of thing. All right. And if you guys have any questions after our presentation, you can send us an email. And then we've got a bunch of tech information here. And um, Garen Hochstetler, librarian at the main library downtown, um, is does a lot of this work and is familiar with uh, all this type of equipment and software. So mm -hmm. he's somebody you could also get in touch with. And like even said, don't try to read all this or write this down. We'll have the slides for you available afterwards. <laughs> and, and even since Becky compiled this, which was originally compiled at the time that we were doing this presentation for the Nebraska Library Association conference in October, uh, since then we've added even more technology. So this is this is not even up to date. So uh, just to show you that we are definitely dealing with cutting edge stuff here. So. Mm -hmm. Nice. So anyway, basically to conclude, um, libraries are a rich and reliable source of those connections with people, especially with the book talking. And that's so important to the education and enlightenment and enjoyment of people in our own communities or our service areas and beyond. You know, if you're online, somebody can find you and, and use those resources that you make available and make those connections. Absolutely. Great, thank you so much, Becky and Scott. Um, if anybody has any questions, comments, or any thoughts you wanna share, go ahead and type in the questions section. Um, uh, we do have a, a, a question here. Uh, we're not after the pandemic as we know, although that was something we were all hoping this would be related to. So, but um, thinking for that time, do you think that some of these um, remote type program um, services like the story time to go or the book discussions that are done on Zoom would be something you would continue after when there's a real after? <laughs> um, we have a, uh, actually that's perfect timing here, uh, this afternoon I'm even attending a, a Zoom session uh, that is our virtual programming committee. Uh, after the past year and a half, uh, we decided, uh, let, let's be honest, we didn't necessarily know what we were doing when we went into having to do all this digital stuff. And so it was sort of kind of slap shot. It was like certain people who had some experience using different types of software were just sort of thrown into the mix and said, hey, let's start comparing creating stuff that we can share with people, virtual story times, virtual book talks, that kind of stuff. Um, 
we now have realized after having done that for a year and a half that we need some structure to that. So here at the Lincoln City Libraries, we have a committee that has been established, the Virtual Programming Committee, and they are going to be meeting on a regular basis to determine the guidelines for creating this kind of stuff. And I think that the, mm -hmm. the, the long-term plan is, no matter whether we compul compul pull fully out of this pandemic to the point that we're really comfortable doing in person, I think virtual is going to be a component of what we do from this point on. If nothing else, uh, things that we had been doing prior to this, the video programs uh, where we recorded a book talk, uh, um, like, like a John H. Ames reading series, or the podcasts, those are all virtual services, and so those are going to mm -hmm. certainly continue into the future, but I think we're going to probably be adapting and making use of some of these newer things that we've done just in the last two years, as well as the things that we had been doing previously. So yes, mm -hmm. I think the future is going to be a combination of different yes. formats. Hybrid, definitely. Um, as you said, I mean, everyone was thrown into this and just had to buy the seat of their pants, figure out how do we do it. But there were some things we were already, already doing that way before. There have been online conferences. I mean, we've been doing Encompass Live, this show, since 2009. So this type of thing is not new, but um, some of the other things we were doing are. So um, that's great. They said, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, and, and I think that the uh, the benefit to people, I, I keep thinking of this in terms of Lincoln City Libraries, because that's just where I am. But when, you, when you're when you dealing with, say, some rural library systems and stuff where it's harder to get people together, being able to do these kinds of virtual things is actually extremely beneficial to those kinds of environments, because you're dealing with a different type of clientele than a Lincoln City Libraries, where you've got hundreds of, or thousands of people within the radius of, of your individual facility. When you're dealing with a small town library, you've got an entire county's worth of people and being able to do something where you're all sitting staring at each other's faces on, on a, a Zoom session is completely different than it might be for a, a big city system. So. Yeah, uh, maybe the best way if people can't drive for an hour to get to the library as opposed to here where it's five minutes, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. All right. Well, it doesn't look like any other extra desperate questions came in while we were answering that one. Um, we chatting, were so but... thorough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's not a problem. Um, you, you guys, you all know where to find Becky and Scott at Lincoln City Libraries. If you do have any questions you want to ask of them and you want to pick their brain about any of this. Um, they said the presentation, the slides will be available along with the recording afterwards as well that has their email addresses on there too. So um, I think I will wrap things up at our um, for today. Thank you so much, Becky and Scott. I'm so glad to be able to come on today. I know it's a short notice for everyone um, because we did have to move around some things here due to some staffing uh, issues here at the commission. So the session we we're going to have today uh, has been is being postponed new date to come uh, keep your eyes open for that. It's our maker spaces session about our library innovation studios project that just wrapped up but i'm so glad we were able to ha have you um both on for this um i had been i watched the presentation the recorded one from at the nla conference and thought it was so good i had it on my list of i need to get them on encompass live too <laughs> see what's happening since thank since you, October. Th so. thank you for having us so. yeah. yeah thank you so much um i am going to pull presenter control back to my screen so i can show you all where are these recordings would be there we go so thank you everybody for attending today um this is our main encompass live page if you just use your search engine of choice and type in encompass live we're the only thing called that on the internet so far so nobody else can use that name <laughs> these are our upcoming shows and this is where our archives are. There's a link just right beneath them that'll bring you to our archives. This is the um, most recent one at the top of the list. So today's show will be there. Should be ready and up by, um, by the end of the day tomorrow at the latest. Um, link to our YouTube channel with a recording, a link to the slides. Um, Becky, you can email them to me whenever you get a chance. Um, everyone who attended this morning and uh, registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when it's available. Uh, while we're here, I'll show you there is a search feature. You can search our show archives for any other topics you might be interested in. You can search the full the most the full archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want just something re recently done. Um, that is because this is our full show archives, as I just mentioned a few minutes ago. We premiered in 2009 with the show, and our our all of our shows are here. You can see this is a long list. I'm not going to scroll all the way down, um, but. Uh, so would you pay attention when you are watching a recording to the original broadcast date? Everything has a date. 
Uh, some shows will stand the test of time and be good, useful information. Still, some things will become old, outdated, links might be broken, services and products may have changed drastically. So just pay attention to what you're watching on here. But we are librarians. This is one of the things we do is archive things for historical purposes, and we will keep them here available to you as long as we can, as long as there's somewhere to have them. Um, we also have a Facebook page if you do like to use Facebook. Um, it's linked from all of our main websites. We were put reminders here. Here's a reminder to log into today's show, information about our speakers, um, schedule change, when our recordings are available, everything is on here. So if you do like to use um, uh, Facebook, give us a like over there. Otherwise, on both Twitter and Instagram, we use the NCOMP Live um, hashtag for the show. So you can see what we're doing over there. Uh, so that'll wrap up for today's show. And next week, it is the last Wednesday of the month, so it is Pretty Sweet Tech Day. Um, last Wednesday of every month, um, Amanda Sweet, our technology innovation librarian, comes in the show and does something tech-related. And next week, she's going to be talking about web scraping, hmm. uh, trying to copy and paste things from a website. It takes a lot of work. There's an easy way to do that. She's going to show us how to do that with Web Scraper 101. So do sign up for that show and any of our other ones. I do have things scheduled, for, um, booked for the middle of February here, and I'm just waiting for some uh, official descriptions and titles of shows. So keep an eye on our, our calendar here and um, to see what new um, topics we have coming up. Other than that, thank you everybody for being here with us. Thank you, Becky and Scott. Stay warm. <laughs> if you're in one of our areas that is uh, freezing cold as we are here today. <laughs> See you on the future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye.